What is your name? My name is Mark Lewis Johnson, Sr. How long have you been a minister? I've been a minister for 22 years. How long have you been a pastor of Liberty Hill? I've been the pastor of Liberty Hill for five years. What is Home for the Holidays? Home for the Holidays is a celebration of life. It's just having fun with the community, having fun with the family. So we were thinking about this whole, during the holiday season from Thanksgiving all the way to New Year's is the highest level of depression, the highest level of suicides in our nation. And so we said, how can we make that space a day where we can have events and creativity for kids and families that they can enjoy. So with that process, we have an opportunity to, to do those things. So we stretch our home for the holidays during that time. You need me to do it again? I can give you, a, I can give you another answer to flow with it, but I, was, I saw her say, oh man. No, oh, it just went dark on you. Oh, so I, in other words, just ignore you. Yeah, Anything, yeah. I'm looking at you because the camera wants me to look at you. Uh. All right, that's the, that's the flow. And if you look away, I won't care. So just. All right. I'll, I'll say it again. I'll start from home for the holidays is I'll go and I'll take okay. it from there. All right. Ready? You ready? All right. Home for the holidays is a celebration of during the holiday season. We started it from the pre Thanksgiving celebration all the way to New Year's. And our goal was just to plug the holiday season with fun events like skating and bowling and uh, church events and celebrations uh, during the holiday season uh, because we found out that during that space there was a huge amount of depression goes up during the holiday season. Suicide rates goes up during the holiday season. We wanted to take that out and give people, take away all excuses for not having fun during the holiday time. And so we put this, this package of events together so that the families can have a wonderful time together. How long have you been doing? How long have you been doing? Home for the Holidays began in 2009, so I guess for five years now, uh, we've been working on Home for the Holidays, and it's growing because it's including the community as well. What made you create Home for the Holidays? Yeah, at, when I think about Home for the Holidays, the only thing that came to my mind was I was walking up Euclid Avenue, and I was watching a mother and all of her kids during the holiday season, and I said to myself, man, they should be going somewhere, but if they went somewhere, they would have to spend 60 70 $80 just for their whole family. So I said, we got to come up with an event so that a family like that can have a place where they can go. And so we're really trying to be uh, effective in the community, save money, and give people an opportunity to enjoy something special. And uh, Home for the Holidays was created from that. What events are you having this year? Yeah, this year, we're going to, I mean, we got some great things coming. We're going to have prayerfully. Um, this got to work. It just got to work. We're going to do our football. We're going to add our basketball. We're going to do our skating. We're going to do our ice skating. We're going to do our uh, home for the holidays. But one of the differences that we're doing with home for the holidays this year is that we're going to do Christmas caroling. And so how does that look? Every Wednesday during the home for the holiday season, we are going to be going to nursing homes and really bringing holiday cheer into it. So we're going to pick a nursing home on a Wednesday. We're going to take the whole entire church and say we're going to sing songs. We're going to read scriptures. We're going to have a wonderful time and create a, a wonderful home for the holidays. So it's going to be a, just packed with so much stuff, so much, some new things and some old things that we've done before. And uh, it'll be a great emphasis for our community. So what is Turkey Bowl? Oh, my goodness. Here we go. I knew it was coming. Turkey Bowl. Turkey Bowl is, is really a battle between two people, myself and Kevin Taylor. I don't, I, sometimes I think about Kevin. I just I really don't like him. I mean, I think he's all right sometimes, but I don't, he's not one of my favorite members of our church. I'm, I'm glad he still comes. So we started this battle, his football team versus my football team, and he's been killing me. So I think his record is like one and three. Uh, he's beating us pretty bad every year. And so um, Turkey Bowl is just a football challenge. Let me look at the camera on this, Kevin. If you're paying attention right now, I just want to let you know, this is not your year. <laughs> All those years you've been winning, it's not your year, man. Something different going to happen this year. I'm just telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. <coughs> How do you plan on improving that after your game? I'm telling you right now. Right now. I'm, I'm telling you right now, Kevin. This is, going to be, this is not the year to play with me. 214. I'm sorry. Just had a, just had a moment. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, I got the plan. I got a plan. <clears throat> this year, my sons, Kevin, 
are getting older. Caught his first touchdown in 2009. He's 10 years old now, Kevin. He's my man. He's like my Terrell Owens, Jerry Rice. I got some weapons. They come. I told you my sons were going to start to grow. So I'm going to change my record through my own loins, Kevin. My kids, they're going to get bigger and stronger. I'm sorry. I just, I just, hold on. Can we just stop? I'm giving, I'm giving him everything something to work with. <laughs> oh, man, pray for us. <laughs> what, made you, what made you do Thanksgiving Day feeding? Yeah, you know what? I have to give a whole lot of credit to Sister Renee Street. She came up with the idea. We, we always do a third Sunday, um, a third Saturday feeding. Uh, but Renee Street came to us and said, why don't we do Thanksgiving dinner on Thanksgiving? And I looked at her and said, let's do it. And so she got the team together, the kitchen staff together, Brother Yancey, all the guys, everybody came together and uh, did on that Thanksgiving. And we had volunteers and with uh, Sister Judith Young and so many other people just came uh, and made Thanksgiving dinner such a big feast that even the community now is looking forward to volunteer their time and coming for Thanksgiving Day. So it'll be interesting to see what happens this year as it's starting to grow, grow bigger. Where do you see your church within the next 10 years? Yeah, 10 years. This is, we're going to be rocking and rolling. <laughs> I mean, we're in the, in our, our church is in transition right now. Um, if you look at the churches in general, um, and I've had conversations with pastors from across the nation, and we all are saying the same thing, that the church is starting to go through this transformation. And I think it is not, not so much because we want to, but because when we look at the world, there's a lot that's changing in the world, and we've got to be ready to make a shift to win in those those millennials, those individuals, those younger, that younger generation that's out there really trying to search and really trying to cut through all the red tape to get straight to the gospel, straight to missions and straight to those things. So when I look at our church in 10 years, I see our, our church just thriving, uh, a music ministry that's taking off. I see mission teams, us sending people out into the mission field, going to Ghana, going to Africa, going to South America and doing uh, uh, just doing work for the kingdom of God. Um, I also see just an uh, just a multicultural i want to see individuals who are latina that's uh, a caucasian that's black i want to see us all come together um and i think this can be the place we're right on the health line lebron james came to our church no he didn't come to our church but lebron james came back to cleveland <laughs> and his move to cleveland has caused just a buzz um, the cleveland clinic is expanding and growing and so the dynamics of the city is going to change so everything around our church is going to be shifting and we got to be willing to make that shift in order to bring those people in. So it's going to be an exciting time. I'm looking forward to the challenge. It gets them out of their house. That's what we want to do. We want to get people out of their house. And not so much in the church house, but at a, a church event or at an event, um, ice skating. I mean, who gets a chance to do that all the time? Roller skating. You can do it anytime, but it's something about going with a group of people. And so our community, I mean, we do the feeding. We do so many other different things. But this will give them an opportunity to kind of get out and say, hey, let's try something different. Let's try something new because we're positioned to be the kind of church that can help people enjoy their lives. And so with something like Home for the Holidays, maybe they'll check it out. Maybe they'll come in and see it and not stay. Uh, one huge point was New Year's, our New Year's Eve celebrations that we've been having. It was just one of those moments where people from the community say, hey, I don't have anything to do on New Year's Eve. And instead of staying at home and watching it on television, they can now come and be a part of our celebration. And we have a phenomenal New Year's Eve celebration. And we look forward to seeing what we can do to have games and fun and just fellowship for kids, because that's the tone that we're trying to set for our community. What age, is, what age can be involved in Home for the Holidays? Yeah, the ages are, are wide open. When I think about the ages for home for the holidays, I'm looking at, here's what I like to do. We had, uh, everybody know how to do the cha-cha slide, electric slide, and all these different dances. But there's a song called The Wobble. Now, you would think that that song is for young people, right? You see young people. But I saw a lady who was 70 years old, 72, she may have been 73, doing The Wobble. And she was getting it done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm saying this home for the holidays is for everybody who just want to have fun. 
Because when we think about a church, you think about the suit, the tie, the pastor, the deacons. But there's a, I mean, church should be like a family reunion. It should be just us getting together, having a good time, catching up with each other, uh, invoking the presence of God and just enjoying the experience. And I think if the church can get to that point, then they can see that, man, from every age, from the cradle to the grave, we can enjoy, enjoy Christ in so many different ways. <laughs> no, he's just checking. Mm -hmm. Divine, I know there's our dance team was singing. Huh? When we asked about the seniors, well, you can speak. Yeah. That's more recent. Okay. What's next for your youth and in your upcoming events? What's next for Liberty? Yeah, when I think about what's next for Liberty, the immediate next, uh, we have a lot of things that's going to be coming down the pike, but the immediate next is really, I want to get back to the family fun nights. Uh, that's one thing that I think is important. And I'm trying to figure out why God has me on this fun kick. Like the Lord is saying, my people need to have fun. Let's have some fun. Let's enjoy life together because it's so short and it's fleeting. So we can come in in our suits and, and sing the songs, sing the hymns, and there's a place for that. But for the most part, the church should be fun. When you're a kid, to, to stay, the, what kept me in church was the fact that we had fun. Like I went to church, my friends were there, we were playing games, we had a good time. I, just, I knew about the Bible, but then as you got older, we start to lose that fun. Like we, you know, we're, we're too, it's, God is more serious, right? God is more deep. God is more, no, nah, God is saying, I'm even more fun as you understand who I am. So the order you get, you're supposed to be in, man, let's enjoy the Lord today. Let's come into the, I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. So the, it was gladness that took part in it. And I think sometimes we as a church can make things so, uh, so we got to get back to family fun nights and really start to build this relationship with our church and our community so that we can just start having fun together. And then from there, we can start enjoying Christ together as well. So Family Fun Nights is a, a big thing that's, that's coming swing. The missions field, we got to do more work outside of the church. As we get connected as a family, we go outside of the church and really start to build our relationships. And missions is not some you got to go into a desert island, uh, third world country. It's just like, you know, we're going to be in the Cleveland Clinic, walking the hallways, praying. Like, right. So our mission today is we're going to Cleveland Clinic and we're just going to pray. Just walk up the halls and pray. You don't have to do anything. Just pray up the halls. That's a mission. So when I think about those kind of things, I'm taking it from this height and bringing it down to an area where we can grab hold to it and do some effective things. So missions, fun, big keys for our church as we move forward. So can you talk more about mm -hmm. your events for the youth and children like your um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're trying to put that puzzle together. When I think about our kids, and that's, that's a huge point, I'm hoping that the ministries for our kids can also cross over to the ministry for our adults where they're having just as much fun. We, we're doing a, a trick-or-treating event and some of those things that's been coming up. We're also the basketball component. We have the dance ministry. We have uh, educational things that we're trying to do for our kids. And it's funny because they're all in pockets. They're not in a, a unit where we're gelling and it's a, there's a flow to it, but they're all sprinkled here. This is happening here, this is happening here, this is happening here. Man, it's gonna be crazy. I think the biggest thing for us is how do we pull all of that together with youth, youth church, with Vacation Bible School to have a schedule so that everybody can see, man, we have a youth ministry that's in sync, that's in rhythm, that's in a flow, that's in a bubble together so it can begin to, to really work and do some great things. So those are the kind of things that's coming and we just gotta tie the loop on it, but it's gonna take some commitment from our, our, our church. We're gonna have to say, this, I'm gonna hold this stick. You hold that stick, I hold this stick. And collectively, we can build the house together. Band, mm -hmm. like, come as you are. Yeah. As long as you're here, so in your hat, in your yeah. Oh, she did ask it, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> is her question gonna be heard on there? Does she need to ask the question so you can hear it? No, we, or is it the setup for the, yeah, I know what you're doing. I, I'm just kind of seeing your vision. I see what you're doing. Mm-hmm. The come as you are question? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> come as you are. How do you yeah. come as you are, how do you inspire your your members of your church as well as the community to understand the purpose of your church and how you are inspired to having people come in just just yeah. be here. And whatever yeah. you have or whatever you can wear. Come. Yeah, the come as you are is gonna be crucial for uh, a a generation who may not be able to afford nice suits. Nice. One of the ways that I communicate come as you are is by coming as I am. Like you see me, you, I come to church, I got on, you know, a, a, just a, a shirt. I'll come in with a collar shirt, a shirt without a collar. I'll come in with a sweater. I'll just come in. 
like I very rarely wear what you see now. You know what I mean? And so, uh, matter of fact, I'm gonna take this off right now. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I, I really like, I mean, I think, you know, when I think about the Bible and I think about the people who came in contact with Jesus, they weren't trying to look their best, right? They didn't come to him saying, I mean, I, I get it. I understand about looking your best, being your best, bring your Sunday's best. I understand all that. But when you look at the Bible, people didn't get dressed up before they came to Jesus. You had people coming as they were. So the woman with the issue of blood, she came to him as she was. Uh, the man who had a, a broken leg and he couldn't walk, he was crippled, he came as he was. The person who was blind came as he was. Like everybody didn't get, get ready to come to Jesus. They came as they, they were. And so that's been my mindset. Now you can, you can put on a suit and clothes and, and I understand the respectability and everything that comes with that. But I'm saying to our people, just get here. Like, there may be some days where you don't feel like putting on a suit, a hat, and all those kind of things. You may wear a suit and hat one Sunday, and next Sunday you may come in a jogging suit and just be like, I just felt like wearing this today. I didn't feel like getting it all together. And so with that, I think people need to have that, that moment where they can come to God as they want to come. Um, and so there were some, you know, who come to church, they got on a suit, the hat, and that's how they want to come. But there's others who may not want to come. The question is, Am I going to put down a person who doesn't come with the suit and hat? Or am I going to put down a person who comes with the suit and hat? You know what I mean? So I think there's a respectability that needs to take place from all sides to say, when we say come as you are, that may mean a suit for some people. But for somebody else, it may just mean I'm just going to get here because I'm hurting and I just need to be made whole and I don't feel like putting on a suit. And so come as you are, I try to inspire that by how I come and then let people take my lead. I try to pause so you got that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do I need to put this back up? <laughs> Does it change up? Yeah. Keep going, man. I'm with you. Do I need to put this back on to go back to the way I was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it won't mess up the, uh, your editing when you go back through an edit. I can't see it, so you have to tell me if it's straight, crooked. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I can't sit still. I can give you, if, if it's for the video, I can, I can do it straight if you need it. But I do want you to. What is home for the holiday? You want me to clean it? No, just, just do it again. I'm okay. Just, just a wider shot. Okay, okay, okay. What is home for the holiday? <laughs> you need her to say it? Okay. <laughs> home for the holiday, the, the goal, what is it? Or you want me to say how it came to be and all, every, put everything together one more time? No, just put what is home for the holiday. Okay. Home for the Holiday is just a series of events for our community to enjoy. It's designed to go from pre-Thanksgiving all the way to the new year and just be filled with events, with Bible teachings, with worship experiences. And we do everything from ice skating to bowling to basketball to just having a wonderful experience from one moment to another. We do Christmas caroling and we do everything we can just to let's, let people have a wonderful time during the holiday season. That's Home for the Holidays. Try to put you a, a closer, a book in, you know, how you open, close in. Mm -hmm.